possible that they're um, preparing to have it revalued higher and have it partially back some of their or their currencies in some way? Um, I mean, there are good reasons they're buying gold, yes. Um, and uh, it's, if you like, an escape from the dollar, which I think is is probably the most important point. But the, the, the Chinese situation is interesting because um, you, you have to go back to when the People's Bank of China, the state bank, um, the state central bank, was first appointed uh, the monopoly of gold and silver dealing. And that was way back in 1983. So we're talking about something which is, you know, 38 years ago now. Now, what happened was that um, no um, resident in China was allowed to hold gold at all, or silver for that matter. We know this because the state still controls and runs completely all the refining, gold refining um, industry in China. And furthermore, imports dore from other countries. We also know this, that no gold leaves China at all. So, you know, is this a, you know, do they like gold? Like hell they do. They really love it. I mean, it's quite clear. So, um, and also anecdotal evidence, um, you know, through contacts, um, you know, they tell me that uh, uh, this has been distributed around various accounts. For example, the people, the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, has stacks of it in, in warehouses. The Communist Party account has stacks of it and all the rest of it. None of this is appearing really in uh, the official reserves. So they've got loads of it. And the answer I think is, they're not going to use it to back um, their own currency uh, because that would limit what they do with their own currency. But it is an insurance policy against a collapsing dollar. And you must uh, remember that um, Marxist universities, where all these guys learned their economics, um, the number one thing that they say, which is something that Marx said, and that is that capitalism destroys itself and their currencies with it. And um, in return for the 120 billion going in, they then sell to the Fed um, or transfer to the Fed um, US treasuries and agency funds. And that's the 120 billion. They invest that 120 billion in higher uh, risk assets, which are corporate debt, for example, and also equities. So you have this situation where <clears throat> the investment going into corporate debt suppresses debt yields for corporates, which makes them look a lot better than they really are. And it also puffs up share prices in the equity market, making things look a lot better than they really are there as well. Now, the last time that um, someone really did this uh, was uh, John Law back in France in 1720. And um, we know what happened there. I mean, basically what he did was he printed French livre because he, amongst other things, he was the controller of the currency. Look at the current situation. They are printing dollars, they are printing euros, they are printing pounds, they're printing yen to keep stock markets high and to keep them bubbling. And at some stage, this is going to go wrong. Now, this is where we start talking about the effect of inflation, because the effect of inflation, monetary inflation, is to drive up prices, which drives down the purchasing power of these currencies. So you can see that, uh, the, you know, the, the extent of the bubble um, is the highest it's ever been by a long, long chalk. And it's an interesting situation. I mean, I've been through a number of bubbles. Um, and you had the, the psychology of it is that a, an investment manager cannot afford to, to not take part. He cannot afford to sit on the sidelines and watch prices go up. Because if he does that, he's out of a job. If he is fully invested and it collapses, then he's just got to hope that his losses aren't as great as his competition's losses. And he will turn around and say to his poor, long suffering <laughs> uh, clients, you know, haven't I done well? I've only lost 90% of your money and the index is down <laughs> 95. And at that point, everything took off. Um, which, as I say, was actually more an indication of uh, the destruction of the dollar than anything else. But um, 
equities have been in a bull phase since then, and they have rarely risen. I think they've almost doubled on, on the S&P. I mean, it's not far off that. Um, and uh, of course, you know, everyone can see this. Everyone thinks, well, you know, the Fed's in there buying, you know, or, or forcing the, the institutions to buy 120 billion a month of corporate bonds and, uh, you know, and equities. We better buy as well. And um, furthermore, uh, you know, because we probably missed it at the beginning, we better gear up so that we, <laughs> we get back on track. 